Thanks very much, everybody. We're right? Okay. Great. Uh, look, it's wonderful to be back here in Cambodia. I have visited previously in a personal capacity, but this is my first visit as Foreign Minister. And it is fantastic to be here at Cha Angre to open the Australian Centre for Education's new campus, which was opened some 30 years ago by Prime Minister Paul Keating, uh, the who opened the first centre uh, in Phnom Penh. And since that time, ACE has delivered English language training to more than half a million Cambodians. It's a wonderful demonstration of investment in people and investment in people-to-people -people links. This year is also a, an auspicious year for Australia-Cambodia relations, marking the anniversary, the 70th anniversary of diplomatic links. A reminder of uh, Australia's long-standing engagement uh, in this region, the region we share, uh, and a reminder of Australia's long-standing uh, and deep engagement with Cambodia. We share a region, we share a future, and we share today's challenges. Uh, of course, the organisation which centrally deals with the shared interests of Southeast Asia is ASEAN. Uh, and I said when I uh, had the honour of being appointed Australia's Foreign Minister that one of my top priorities would be engagement with Southeast Asia and with ASEAN as an entity. It is in our country's interests uh, to help shape the region, to help shape a strategic equilibrium in this region where countries are not forced to choose but can all make their own sovereign choices and ASEAN is central to achieving that. We want a region where no one country dominates, where sovereignty and sovereign decisions are respected and the agreed rules of the road are followed. I'm looking forward very much to the many meetings over the next couple of days and to deepening our partnership with ASEAN. I'm happy to take questions. I know there are some journalists apparently on the phone to take questions. If they could just allow me to take some questions from those who are here and then I'll turn to those who are on the phone. So happy to take questions. Sorry, well, your first question was how many days am I here? I'm afraid I'm, I'm very, here for a, a very narrow uh, period of time. I, I hope I can come back again uh, soon. Uh, we, uh, Parliament was sitting in Australia, so I had to uh, attend Parliament. So we flew through the night to be here by this morning. Uh, it was a very beautiful sunrise, I have to say, coming in. Uh, and uh, I will be here, obviously, today. Uh, and tomorrow for the meetings. But your question on the 70 years, yes. look, I, I, I would say, uh, and I, when I spoke to um, your foreign minister, uh, we talked about the 70 years and the achievements, uh, shared achievements, and obviously Australia is, as I said in my speech, both humbled and proud, proud of our involvement in the peace accords, uh, our involvement in supporting Cambodia uh, to uh, you know, a, a new, uh, modern, uh, vibrant uh, nation and uh, our role in working with uh, others uh, to end the conflict. And I hope, you know, that that, that is a, a part of our shared history that we can again underline this year. Anyone else? Yes, you go. Yes, uh, look, that's a good question, and I think uh, uh, probably I'd refer to my answer to your colleague, which is obviously one of the great achievements was the peace accords and the work that both uh, our nations did, and, and uh, former uh, Foreign Minister Gareth Evans uh, and, uh, um, uh, and others to support the uh, process of ending the conflict. Uh, but I, I look forward to uh, continued and greater engagement on education. Uh, I know that we have also worked together in the addressing the shared challenge of COVID. Uh, uh, but ultimately, I make this point. 
we live in a region that is being reshaped. Uh, and all countries will make their own decisions about how they navigate that reshaping. I hope uh, that in our bilateral relationship, but also in our relationship with Cambodia as um, a, uh, an important ASEAN member, uh, that we can together shape a region that is in all our country's interests. We want a region that is in which decisions are not made only by power and might, but where their rules of the road enable sovereignty to be respected. Anything more? Okay, shall I take an Australian media question on the phone? Hello, uh, Senator Wong. It's Lisa Martin here from AFP. Uh, how worried is Australia about the prospect of open conflict in uh, the Taiwan Strait? And what message do you have for Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi and US Secretary of State Antony Blinken at this forum? Uh, well, uh, Australia's position is very clear. We support the status quo in the Taiwan Straits. We say that all parties should consider how they contribute to de-escalating current tensions. Uh, and I note that the, the recent statement from uh, the ASEAN Foreign Ministers meeting reflects a similar views. Uh, Australia will, will continue to work with partners to promote peace and stability across the Straits. Uh, and I again underline that Australia's one China policy and support for the status quo remains unchanged. There are the prospects of military drills around Taiwan today. Uh, what was your reaction to that? Uh, well, look, uh, we, we would encourage, as I said, all parties to consider how they can contribute to de escalating uh, the current situation. Uh, and I would again publicly. Um, indicate that one of the risks that I think the region is concerned about is, a, is the risk of miscalculation uh, and uh, you know, we would encourage um, all parties to consider how they can contribute to de-escalating. Uh, you know, Australia's view is de-escalating is in the interests of the region. Just on Myanmar, uh, the previous government said uh, it was reviewing uh, the prospects of uh, sanctioning the military junta, and you have said that uh, that is under active consideration. How is that any different? Will there be sanctions on the military junta? Uh, well, uh, I'd make a few points. The first in relation to Myanmar, can I take this opportunity to again uh, articulate how appalled and distressed Australia is at the uh, execution of four pro-democracy activists uh, and again call for the regime to, to cease violence. Uh, you would anticipate that we will, as we have uh, in the weeks since we came to government, uh, continue to express our views about Myanmar uh, with and to discuss uh, how we can progress the situation in Myanmar with ASEAN partners. Uh, we will continue to support ASEAN's leadership in responding to this crisis. And I do say publicly again, we are dismayed that the regime continues to disregard the five point consensus. Uh, I said that sanctions uh, against members of the military regime are under active consideration. I don't propose to go into any further detail about that. Uh, at this point, but I would say I've also made clear that we are willing uh, and open to engagement with the NUG, uh, as I did in opposition. Uh, we intend uh, to uh, continue uh, down that path in government. Do you have any update on the fate of uh, Sean Chanel? Has your government or, or, or Australian diplomats most spoken directly to uh, representatives from the junta about his case since Labor came to power? Is there any glimmer of hope? Uh, look, uh, I'd say in relation to Professor Sean Turnell, Professor Turnell remains our first priority, our first priority, and that has been reflected in our uh, engagements. Uh, I. Uh, would acknowledge publicly uh, and uh, the interventions by and the advocacy uh, uh, for uh, Professor Turnell that a number of uh, ASEAN's, ASEAN 
uh, representatives have engaged in uh, and including uh, from Cambodia and to thank them for that. Uh, foreign ministers from ASEAN countries uh, yesterday lamented the lack of progress on the five-point plan of consensus. Is, is that uh, plan dead in the water uh, or uh, are you hopeful that, that there could be some progress um, before the, the leaders summit um, in November when, when leaders will decide what next? Mm. Well, uh, uh, we always hope for progress. Uh, uh, I note that ultimately uh, ASEAN will have to determine how it wishes to proceed given the Junta's failure to respect the five-point consensus and I hope that there is progress to or at or ahead of or at the leaders meeting. Okay. Do you think the, the, last one, Lisa. Uh, thank just, you. Just one. Uh, earlier this week, uh, Indonesia raised major concerns at the UN about Australia's AUKUS submarine program. Malaysia is also quite anxious about it. Uh, you don't obviously have a bilateral meeting scheduled with either country uh, uh, at uh, ASEAN. Uh, will you get a chance to address some of Indonesia's concerns um, that were in that um, working paper? Well, we, we engage with Indonesia deeply and regularly. Uh, and I don't propose to provide a running commentary, but I would say this, uh, as I've said publicly, and I, uh, that re remains Australia's position, uh, Australia uh, and this government uh, uh, is fully committed to our obligations under the Non-Proliferation Treaty. Uh, we uh, will ensure the highest possible standards apply to AUKUS. Uh, we are working with the IAEA to reflect that. Uh, and Australia has, uh, I think, a very strong track record in its non-proliferation -prol obligations and we, we will, uh, if anything, seek to strengthen them through this process. Is there anything further? Thanks very much, Lisa. Uh, no, no, I thank think... You. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> okay. Thanks very much, everybody. Nice to see you.